Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's get straight into today's makeup tutorial. I'm going to be using the Murad Invisiblur. This is a perfecting shield broad spectrum SPF for 30. I've used this a couple of times already on the channel and it's a really good product that has no fragrance to it. It does exactly what it says. It has a very subtle silica feel, but miles better than the ones that originally came out a few years ago. It has more of a silky feel to it. It's really lovely and it works brilliantly. Murad is backed by Science and a dermatologist behind the brand. So they really do put a lot of thought into what's good for the skin and also how best to tackle things like pores. And this is a great one for underneath your makeup. And a little goes a long way, I've put way too much on there. For foundation today, I'm gonna use this one by El Maquillage. This is one of those ones you've probably see going viral all over the internet. You'll see it all over Facebook. There's loads of paid sponsorship behind this product. So I wanted to try it. A lot of you messaged me asking if I would give it a go. And I decided because it has a money back guarantee that if you don't like it, there's no questions asked, they just give you your money back. So I thought, you know what, I've got nothing to lose. I will try it. So this shade is 060 and it's the World Cup Like This foundation. This is the colour they sent me based on the quiz online and it is a pretty good quiz. You've got to be quite good at being able to tell whether you are similar to the photos that are online. They ask what coverage you're into, um, what kind of foundation you like and it almost seems a bit pointless considering this is the only foundation that they offer. The idea behind it is that it is great for all skin types. So whether you are mature skin, whether you are oily, whether you're dry, the idea is that this foundation is good for everybody. And I really do love the consistency of it. And don't be put off by all those online videos you see of people swiping it over their face and it's like the most incredible pigment payoff. It does have quite a high pigment, but it's not the highest of pigments that I've seen. You won't get a sheer coverage unless you blend it with a moisturizer, but you can definitely sheer it out to more of a medium coverage if you apply it for your fingers. And considering it is matte, it's not super drying. It actually feels like a really nice high quality foundation. So also with this foundation is that it is cruelty free. I don't believe there's any fragrance to it. It's got no scent whatsoever. And there are 50 shades available. So it really is super inclusive. It probably is one of my more favorable matte foundations. But as I'm getting older, I'm not kind of using the matte foundations as much anymore. I find them to be a little bit more aging. But overall, I like it so much more than I thought I was going to. I really thought it was just a bit of a fad, but it's actually a really lovely texture and it's really good at covering, but also still looking very natural. If you only really want that medium coverage, you can still see my freckles. Um, so yeah, really nice. Like with any matte foundation, still make sure you've got a lot of moisture on your skin before you apply it, because otherwise it will feel super drying and if you've got any dry areas, it will cling to it. I also picked up their concealer. I do my best not to swear on this channel, so I'm not gonna pronounce the name of it, but this is the concealer. Um, you get quite a lot of this concealer. You get a little window here so you can see the color and how much you've got left. And it has a little doe for applicator, which most concealers have these days. The first shade they sent me from the quiz was way too light, and this one still is pretty light. I got in touch with them, so they kindly sent me two shades darker and I was ready to return the other one because it does say that you can return it for a different colour but they actually told me not to bother so I ended up with two <laughs> which I thought was a really good customer service I feel like it almost blends out to nothing um, rather than it sort of staying there it almost shears up too much compared to the foundation so I feel like it probably needed to be a tiny bit thicker I decided this week I would use my Urban Decay Wild West palette again. So you guys, if you're purchasing it, you've got a couple of different looks that you can use as a guide when you pull out the palette. So I've just buffed over the matte shade Nudie all over the socket and up towards the brow bone. I'm now going to define the outer third of the socket line using this shade called Laredo or Laredo. And I'm working that in circular motions from the outer edge through to the center of the socket line. I'm also tapping some of that on the outer third of the actual mobile lid, and this is going to add a really subtle smoke. Cowboy Rick seems to be a very popular shade in this palette, so I knew this week I wanted to use it. It is a really beautiful kind of metallic shimmery silver grey. So for that reason, I'm using my ring finger to press this onto the mobile lid. We're going all the way across and also making sure we put that in the inner corner of the eyes for a little highlight. 
In my earlier years of being a makeup artist, everyone used to use silver, it was such a popular colour and then warm shades come in once social media became a huge thing. So it's nice to see that silver's getting a little comeback. And this really is a great colour if you are a bridesmaid and you're doing your own makeup or your mother of the bride and you just want a very subtle wash of colour, you can just pop one layer of this on and it really will give a beautiful sheen to the eyes. I've gone back in with a small amount of that Laredo shade and I've tapped that on the outer corner to redefine the colour. Along the lash line I'm taking the shade Pony Up and taking the shorter end of the brush that comes in the palette. I'm tapping this on the outer third of the mobile lid. As we reach the centre of the eyelid we want to get closer to the root of the eyelashes so it tapers down. This is a great tip if you are going to be applying an eyeliner and you would like a guide in place that isn't too full on. So if you make a mistake, it's easy to blend back into the eyeshadow. Now I'm taking this black cold pencil by Bare Minerals and it has the tiniest tip so you can get really close to the root of the eyelashes. I'm using this to smudge along the root and then on the outer third of the lid, I'm making that ever so slightly thicker. One tip when using this pencil is not to extend the lead out too far because it will snap. When I say lead, I just mean the black pencil. And then we're going in with a small smudger brush. While it's not set in place yet, because it will set in place, but while it's still blendable, we're going to smudge it slightly with a brush. Now I've done the smudging along the eyelash line, I'm now going to extend a little wing. This is completely optional. But as you can see, you don't need to be too neat with it. Get it on the eye and then use the brush to shape it. For lashes, I'm gonna use these Lash Extension Effects by Ardell. They've created four different sets to suit all different eye shapes and you'll see on the pot which one suits your eye. Along the waterline, I'm using this Rimmel Scandalized 24 hour pencil in the shade gray. I'm using it quite strategically. I'm only applying it to the very rim of the waterline and smudging it into the root of the eyelashes. This way you get the darkness around the whole circumference of the eye, but it doesn't close up the eye too much. If you want that full on smoky feel, you can go right along the waterline. I'm just going for a bit more of a lived in feel. Then I'm taking a small smudger brush and I'm smoking that out with a little bit of the pony up shade between those lower eyelashes. Applying your eyeliner in this way is also a good tip for those of you that always find your eyeliner migrates to the inner corner of your eyes. This happens because your eyes water and it's meeting your waterline which is moving your makeup. By only lining the very rim of your waterline, it won't be affected by watery eyes. Going in with my trusty Bare Minerals Endless Summer Bronzer in the shade Faux Tan. They do this in two shades. Faux Tan is the slightly cooler version and as we've got a cooler look, I'm going for the cooler bronzer. I know I like to use the same bronzer a lot, but I do think that you could spend an abundance of money on a variety of products and only get on with a couple of them. If I stick to a few products on a lot of these tutorials, you get such a variety of different looks using that one product. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder, and I'm gonna use my sponge pressed into it, and I'm gonna press that onto the skin through the center of the face. Next, I'm gonna take a small amount of this blush by NARS. This one is called Behave. I'm gonna pop this on the back half of the cheek. This really does help to kind of sculpt the face. Um, you only need a very light amount, but it does lift the sides of your face. On my lips, I'm going to use this Gel Lip and Cheek Balm by Nude Sticks in the shade Tay Tay. Taylor is a co-founder of Nude Sticks, and I think this is her one, because obviously Tay Tay Taylor. I love these because they're so comfortable and really hydrating, and they just give you a nice wash of colour. Pop it in your bag and just top it up throughout the day. This one's a lovely nudie tone, almost like your lip colour but better. Before I took my makeup off I thought I would show you that you can also wear it with a red lip and it still looks equally beautiful, definitely more evening glam. What do you guys think of the look? Let me know in the comment section below. I like a cool toned look now and again and this one is really really wearable. When I've done cool toned looks before they're a little bit more extreme, I've done a really kind of deep taupe shade which doesn't suit everybody whereas kind of everyone can adapt this look to suit their skin tone it's a really lovely glamorous look with the lashes but still kind of daytime appropriate it's kind of like a daytime glam so if you was going to a wedding and you were wearing cool tone or a silver if you're mother of the bride 
Um, if your bridesmaids dresses have a silver tone, then this particular eyeshadow would look lovely. So as always guys, don't forget all the products I've used will be listed and linked in the description bar. Come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram, which is at Show Me Makeup. If you've got any suggestions for tutorials, please leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.